My name is Laura Boy, and I'm presenting on half of a project looking at the next version of Prevent. So what we're doing is looking at younger adults, how younger adults conceptualize their own brain health, what they know is good for their brain and bad for their brain, and what are they not sure of. So these are some of the core people on the team. There's many people in the Prevent team that have helped support this project. We just have a few photos here of some individuals that for the last year have put in a lot of work to see this project be a success. So this slide has been shown quite a few times, but what I normally would do would show people, you see this line here, you've all seen it a lot of times in Prevent, but you see that square there, that's looking at what, what do we know about risk factors for young adults under the age of 40. And right now you can see we have one variable. We know that early education in life is important to help reduce the risk of dementia later on in life, but we don't know very much else. So what this does is sets up the next generation of individuals for not knowing what they can do to reduce their risk of dementia so in the future they can lower their chances and increase their chances of better brain health. So how many people in the audience right now have people in their lives that are between the ages of 18 and 40? Ah, oh, that's terrific. That's great. I'm so happy you're all going to help me recruit for this study. So, why do we care about young adults? Other than the fact that everybody here has already said there's somebody in their life that they care about in this age demographic. So right now, what we see is young adults advocating for themselves to say, we don't want climate change. You've already given us a burning world. We're already dealing with a recession. And now look what's happening with aging. We want to be able to reduce our own risk of dementia later on in life. So with Craig's gentle influence, um, we started <laughs> the Next Generation Brain Health Study. And we've got a number of aims that we're going to show here. The largest aim right now, because of lack of funding, is to look at how do young adults understand their own brain health. As I said before, what do we know about young adults and how they conceptualize their brain? The two individuals who spoke here earlier, they were talking about sport and they were talking about teaching young people and how they still wanted individuals to be aware of the sport and play the sport and not be, not be fearful of it. So reduce that stigma about what could possibly happen to their brain while increasing the education surrounding what they can do to support their own brain health. The second aim is to determine the prevalence of known risk factors in this group. So to identify what are new risk factors, what are older risk factors that still apply to this generation. And then potentially identify and develop effective methods for estimating dementia risk in this population. So if I could walk over here, I would walk along and show these four things here. So right now, what we did two years ago, or two and a half years ago, we started with public involvement in research. We asked young adults all over the world what do they think about us doing a study about brain health in this demographic? Is this a good idea, a bad idea? Is there an appetite for this? And overwhelmingly, individuals wanted this study to take place, so we did it. We didn't pay them, we paid them for their time, but we didn't pay them to say what we wanted them to say. Then we conducted focus groups with these individuals. I'll talk about that in just a second. Then we rolled out an international survey translated into seven different languages. And currently, we're applying for funding to support a cohort study to do something similar to what PREVENT has done, but 20 years earlier in the lifespan. So the first thing that I'll talk about, other than all those other slides, is the focus groups with young adults. So a year and a half ago, what we did is we recruited a number of individuals, 37 participants with the mean age of 26 years old. So these are individuals in their mid-20s. We asked them, what do you think is good for your brain? What do you think is bad for your brain? And what are some things you're just not sure are good or bad for your brain? I'm going to point to one graph that has to do with this demographic. What we did here, you can see on the blue line, is we oversampled for black individuals in North America and Europe to make sure that our population wasn't the stereotypical white European descent, North American European people, but to make sure the population that was at higher risk for brain health issues was overrepresented and that their voices were predominantly heard in these conversations. Now, the next slide I'm going to show you is a live illustration. Um, there's going to be a lot of images on here, so I'm going to draw your attention to a few of them, but please just enjoy the fact that it's not a graph. <laughs> <laughs> so what you can see here are a couple things I'm going to draw your attention to. 
So I'm right there, you see the person who's looking down. How is birth control affecting us? Young women want to know how does birth control affect their brain health in later life? Other individuals asked, what about stress? What about math? And they said different things like, what about mood stabilizers? Half of us are on mood stabilizers, antidepressants, anti-anxiety. How is that affecting our brain later on in life? Locations where cannabis was legal, individuals wanted to know about that. How does that affect their brain? So a lot of questions. And in fact, the publication we're currently having in press right now, that title of it is More Answers, More Questions Than Answers. How do young under adults understand their own brain health? So we did four of these focus groups, and I can discuss it a little bit more later. Yes, young adults did want to know about vaping. How does vaping affect their brain health? At that time, I didn't have the information there. So there was a lot of people asking us questions about this. Now we have funding to do focus groups with higher risk populations. I'm working with Willie on this. We're looking at young adults who play contact sports. So right now we just started recruitment and we're gonna be hopefully doing these uh, focus groups the next month. What we're gonna be asking them is the same sort of thing. So individuals who just have experienced playing contact sports, whether that's football, rugby, roller derby, anything like that, we're talking to these young people about how they conceptualize their own brain health. We're also talking to individuals with lived experience of obesity. So right now, England has 26% of its population living with obesity. Scotland is winning with 28%. It's not a competition. But we're going to be talking to these young individuals to ask them, what do they think about their own brain health while living in a bigger body? This hasn't been done before. Now, the next thing um, is based off the findings that we have. And several people in the audience were served, served as experts for this production. So funded by Alzheimer's Research UK, we took some of the information found in our previous research, looking at how young adults understand their brain health and what they need to know about their brain health. We worked with comedians and influencers to develop a satirical roadshow, which we toured around England. I'm not a comedian. I just hired comedians to be involved in this production. We toured nine, five different cities and nine different performances. 118 young adults attended to understand basically what's good and what's bad for their brain. And from these productions, again, we found there's a huge appetite for understanding what's good and bad for individuals' brains. If you want to know more about the satirical roadshow, just let me know. I can send you some clips about it. Now back to the science part of it. The Next Generation Working Group has also developed two literature reviews, one specifically on hormonal contraception and brain health in young women, and the second one is a massive scoping review looking at all the literature that touches on young adults and brain health. That one is still being conducted. Now, I think the largest project that this working group has done in the last two and a half years is doing a global survey about brain health in young adults. We've worked incredibly hard on this survey and hats off to my partner and co-lead on this project, Dr. Francesca Farina, who's not here right now, and what we looked at is previous surveys developed looking at global brain health. And you can see on the first line there, previous global surveys on brain health, emphasis and underlining and bold on the word global are 98% white. Interesting. So what we did is we developed a survey working with young people, both with a history of dementia and without a history of dementia. And we generated a 10 minute survey. We've now translated that survey into seven different languages and our goal is to get 5,000 responses. I'll tell you how many we have in just a second. The survey includes things like, what's their awareness of dementia and brain health? What are some of their self-reported understanding of risk factors in their life? What are the barriers and facilitators to their brain health? And their attitudes towards genetic testing. So if there was a test, would they want to know about this? Again, we've used influencers because this is this generation. We're on TikTok, we shared it all over the world, and we're continuing to share it and continuing to get collaborators to translate it into more and more languages. Our goal is 5,000. In the last six months, we've had almost 2,000 responses. You can see here all the different colored countries that where responses are high and where responses are low. You can also see on the red where the most research team for the next generation group is located. Thank you, Katie. 
And so we have quite a bit to go here, but still we're really collecting this data to get a nice understanding, a global understanding in people's languages, working with people in those countries to make sure we get an accurate representation about how people understand their brain health. We were the only group, thank you Craig, in the Alzheimer's disease world report to, gen, uh, to represent young adults. So in their entire report of 75 pages, you can see the places highlighted, and this is the only part where it talked about young adults. Everything else was midlife, older life, or children. So there's a massive gap and an appetite for this knowledge to be found. And finally, here's a slide from Alzheimer's Association International where we had a round table where all these individuals volunteered from around the world to come and discuss what are the key issues about young adult brain health in their regions, communities, and populations of interest. I just want to say thank you to the Prevent team. None of this would exist if the PIs weren't there to support us. And if you want any more information, the website is right there. <laughs>